Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is you, season four. At the end of season three, our anti-hero, the stalker Joe Goldberg, is following his latest obsession, Marianne, to Paris. But it's actually in London where he finally finds her, and it's not the romantic reunion he was hoping for because, you know, she's afraid he's gonna murder her. But Joe's like, whoa, I'm a good guy. I would never hurt you. And to prove it to her and himself, Joe actually lets Marianne go. So Joe decides to stick around London for the season with a new alias, Jonathan Moore, and a new look, the bearded sexy professor. With his love of literature, Joe makes a great professor, and he's doing better not stalking this season. Through the window he sees his co-worker's girlfriend, Kate Galvin. The you talk starts up, but he shuts it down real quick. Joe's doing better now. But by chance one night, Joe saves Kate from a mugging, and Joe finds himself in the inner circle of London's young, ultra-wealthy social elite who are selfish and vapid, and Joe hates them. Except for their one friend, Reese Montrose, a real good guy who grew up poor, has a lot in common with Joe. These two hit it off. But the rest of the group are very hard partiers. Joe can't keep up. He blacks out. He wakes up with a bad hangover and a dead Malcolm on his table. Joe assumes he killed him for being a douche and sets about disposing the body. But that night, Joe gets a mysterious text. Turns out someone was trying to frame Joe and is now very intrigued by Joe's professional body disposal skills. And so this season, the you of Joe's inner monologue is this mysterious killer, and it's a murder mystery as Joe tries to figure out which of these socialites did the deed. Murder mystery is not Joe's favorite genre, so he gets help from his star student, Nadia, who tells him to have his detective lean into their strengths. So Joe puts his stalker skills to use, finds out everyone's dirty secrets, and turns out they all had some motive to kill Malcolm. But when another one's murdered, the artist, Simon, seems someone's targeting this whole group and is dubbed the the rich killer. Now, for some reason, this whole group has very quickly taken to their new friend Jonathan, except for the one Joe actually likes, Kate. She's very standoffish and is justifiably in a bad mood because her boyfriend was just murdered, but soon she and Joe connect over past trauma and start up a torrid affair. So with the killer hunting them, the group hides at Lady Phoebe's country house for the weekend, where they have a murder mystery party, which is maybe in bad taste. And as tends to happen in this situation, there's a real murder, and this time the killer tries to frame Kate. Joe helps Kate dispose of the body, but he's caught by their other friend, Rold. Rold hates Joe because he's obsessed with Kate and is jealous that these two are falling in love. So he puts Joe on trial as the Eat the Rich Killer and sentences him to being hunted in the woods. But Joe's saved by the real killer, Rees Montrose. Yes, turns out Rees kind of hates all his spoiled friends and he's gonna run for mayor, can't have their dirty secrets infecting his campaign. He wants Joe to help him frame Rold for the murders, but Joe's a good guy and frees him instead. With Rees running for mayor, he's always protected, Joe can't just kill him, but Rees breaks into Joe's apartment all the time. He still wants Joe to be his best friend, which in this case means finding someone to frame or else he's going to frame Joe. Conveniently, Phoebe's abducted by her stalker, so Joe gets there first and plants some evidence she goes down as the eat the rich killer. With that taken care of, Reese backs off a bit. Joe and Kate continue to date. Soon he meets her father, Tom Lockwood, a very powerful billionaire. Kate hates him because he's the evil kind who, you know, poisons water supplies to give kids cancer. When Kate's not around, he reveals that he knows Joe's real identity and is sure that he killed his wife, Love Gwynn. Now, long story short, Reese and Lockwood both want Joe to kill the other for him. Reese has leverage because he's found Marianne and taken her hostage, but Lockwood's like, yo, I know where Reese is isolated. So Joe finally gets the upper hand on the killer, Reese Montrose. He interrogates him for Marianne's location, but Reese is playing dumb. I don't even know who that is. Joe gets angry, loses control, and kills him. But now something really weird happens because Reese Montrose steps out of the shadows. Wait, what's happening? Is this a frame job with an identical twin? Turns out it's just that classic twist. This Reese Montrose was in Joe's head. Joe has been stalking someone this season, the real Reese Montrose. He became obsessed, not in a romantic way, but as a best friend. And Joe's mind created him as an alternate personality, one who takes over and kills people. So congrats, Joe. You finally had a complete mental break. And that's why you've been so good this season. You sectioned off your dark side into fake Reese. Unfortunately, this means Joe did not let Marianne go. She's locked in the cage. He's like, I'm so sorry. It really wasn't me. Joe's gonna let her go, then flee the country. But before he can, she overdoses from the pills his Reese persona gave her. And Joe feels terrible that once again, he's killed someone he loved. Speaking of love, things with Kate are going great, and Joe finally starts addressing her in his head as you. But she's got problems with her evil dad, who's still trying to control her life, and turns out it wasn't him who killed the kids with cancer, it was her when she was working for him. So Joe steps in with his white knight instincts, teams up with his dark side to kill her evil father, and while Joe thinks Kate could be the one, he knows he's gotta say goodbye. He has a dream with all the youths from his past who help him see, Joe, you're the problem, there's only one way to break the cycle. And so, in an emotional breakthrough, Joe accepts he has this dark side, but he makes the choice to end it by jumping off the bridge and killing himself. But the bridge wasn't high enough. Joe's totally fine. Kate's like, yo, what the hell, bro? He's like, Kate, I'm sorry, but I'm a bad person. She points out, though, that if you feel bad about being bad, how bad can you be? Huh, I never thought about it like that before. She's like, look, I got a dark side too, but we both want to be good, so let's work together and keep each other good. But before he begins his new good life, there's a loose end with his student, Nadia, who through a series of events has come to suspect him. Earlier, she found Marianne in the basement, but for absolutely nonsense reasons, they decided they couldn't call the cops. So instead, they switched the pills and Marianne faked her death. Yeah, she's totally fine, made it back to France with her daughter. But now Nadia finds evidence to take Joe down. Unfortunately, Joe was one step ahead, but he's like, whoa, I'm a good person now. I'm not gonna kill you. I will, however, kill your boyfriend and frame you for it. Uh, so you're welcome. 
And now Joel Goldberg's ready to start fresh, which unfortunately involves shaving his beard. With his girlfriend Kate's billionaire powers, he's able to undo his fake death and come back with his real name. He's come to accept his dark passenger as part of himself, but with Kate's help, he thinks he can control it and be good. And so Joe Goldberg is living his dream, back in New York with a loving girlfriend he can be a full-time supportive boyfriend to. And now with billions of dollars backing him, he's completely gotten away with all of his crimes. And that's where you, season four, comes to an end. If you liked this recap, hit that subscribe button for more of the best recaps of TV and movies.